Her Best Friend, written by Hannah Jo Abbott. Copyright Hannah Jo Abbott. Chapter 1 Julie Hughes never thought she would return home from college single. But here she was, pulling into her parents' driveway with the last of the items from her dorm room packed into her small SUV. She put the car in park and sat staring out the windshield. This house had been her home for as long as she could remember. Her family had moved in when she was a toddler and her sister was on the way. But last fall she had thought she was moving out for the last time. Who wants to move back in with their mom and dad after living on their own at college for four years? Julie could already imagine how her mom would always want to know where she was going, and when she was coming back. She didn't like the thought of it. But with no job and no prospects, what choice did she have? God, let this be temporary, she whispered before climbing out of the car. The early summer temperatures were already rising in the Tennessee heat. From the back seat she lifted the smallest box, her graduation cap, and gown laid over the top. She made it halfway up the driveway before the front door opened and her mother appeared. Hi, honey. Elise Hughes called out. She reached for the box only to set it down and take her daughter into a breath-stealing hug. I'm so glad you're home. Julie felt her eyes roll in the back of her head, and she coughed. Mom, a little too tight. Her mom released her. I've just missed you. You saw me two days ago at graduation. With a wave of her hand Elise chided her, yes, but I mean before that. I've barely seen you since Christmas. It was a busy semester. I had a heavy workload senior year. Oh, I know, sweetheart. But you're home now, and we can catch up on all our missed time. Now that, she didn't finish the sentence but Julie knew she was about to say now that you don't have anything else to do. Julie had been applying for jobs for more than a month with nothing to show for it. Yes, we'll have some time together. Julie gave her a quick smile before bending to pick up the box. The two made their way into the house. Want something to drink? I've got lemonade and sweet tea. Julie watched her with a twinge of jealousy. Growing up. Julie had always wanted to be like her mom the perfect hostess fitting right into her role as a wife and mom. It was her dream to be married and have a family. Her friends would often tease her that she was really going to college to get a missus degree, but she would argue it wasn't true. Deep down she also wanted to get an education and hoped to have a successful career someday. Julie? She realized she hadn't answered her mom and was staring out the window. Oh sure. Sweet tea sounds great. Julie loved her mom, and her dad too. She knew that they would be kind and caring to her as she moved back home. But the truth was, she was lonely and sad that she wasn't having a summer after graduation wedding like she had always hoped. Elise handed her a tall glass of sweet tea and leaned against the counter. So what's your plan? Well, don't waste any time, mom. What, her mom feigned shock as she held her palms up to the air and shrugged. I'm just curious. I don't know, mom. This wasn't the plan, so I don't know what I'm doing now. What do you mean? I didn't plan to move back here after college. I plan to be starting my own new life now. You are starting your own life. Maybe the beginning isn't what you thought it would be. But you're here, and have the whole world in front of you. You can look for whatever job you want and start figuring it all out right now. Julie stared at her mom. Maybe she was right. A little glimmer of hope fluttered inside. Maybe there was something waiting for her. She just needed to find it. Preferably somewhere besides her little hometown. Asterisk 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 Monday morning Travis Wright stepped through the coffee shop door, and the familiar smell of the roasting beans hit him in the face. He placed his order with the girl at the counter and turned around, coffee cup in hand. His brain was working hard on business figures from the past week and thinking about the schedule for the upcoming one. But when he glanced across the shop, a familiar face caught his eye. All the business information faded as he saw the girl who had caught his attention a long time ago. He watched as she stared at the computer screen in front of her. He knew that scrunched line in the middle of her forehead meant she was concentrating. She didn't take her eyes off the computer. 
he sauntered over, and without a word sat down next to her, and scooted in close as he peered at the computer. Julie gasped and flinched away from him, moving against the wall in the booth until he looked up at her with a mischievous grin. Travis. She swatted his arm. You scared me to death. He reached out and placed two fingers on her neck, and tilted his head as his eyes rolled to the ceiling as if in deep thought. Nope, he said. You're still alive. She swatted him again. What in the world are you doing? Getting coffee, he said, holding up the cup in his hand. The question is, what in the world are you doing here? She let out a heavy sigh, I'm back home. Is that so? Travis tried to stuff down the excitement he felt hearing that. Especially since she looked less than thrilled. For now anyway. She motioned to the computer. But I'm looking for a job. He squinted as he looked at the screen again. What kinds of jobs are these? Entry-level assistant to a manager. Where? Nashville. Nashville? Why in the world are you looking for a job in Nashville? Julie shrugged. I'm just looking at jobs. Maybe in Nashville, maybe in Memphis, maybe in another city. Who knows? What do you want to do? A look crossed her face, and he wasn't sure what it meant. It was a mixture of sadness and hope. I don't know. But I need a job, and I don't plan to live with my parents for long. So I need to start my own life. Why not here in Twin Creeks? She met his gaze and held it for a few moments. As he stared back at her he took her in. His breath caught in his throat as he looked into her dark brown eyes. Her shoulder-length brown hair framed her face, and she looked every bit the girl he had known his whole life. Maybe a little more mature, but still the same. I just don't know if there's anything here for me. Sure there is, his heart picked up speed at the thought of her moving away from the town for good. Even with her off to college, he always thought she would come back. We both grew up here, you know. It's a great place. Of course I know that. Goodness, we've been in all the same places most of our life. School, church, sports. Until you went off to that fancy college. Travis dropped his gaze to the table and sipped his coffee. It wasn't a fancy college. He turned and gave her a look. Really? She rolled her eyes. Fine, maybe it was. And what did you study again, he asked, even though he knew. Retail merchandising. He scratched his head. Translation? Business for retail stores. And you needed a four-year degree for that? She swatted his arm. It's more complicated than it sounds. Maybe, he shrugged. Don't you use your business degree? He shrugged. Sure. A business degree is helpful if you run a business. But I always knew I would work with my dad and take over the equipment company one day. I remember going out to your dad's place when we were in junior high and climbing on the equipment. Yeah, my dad remembers that too. Especially the time we ran the excavator into the building. Julie's hand flew to her mouth and her eyes opened wide as she let out a laugh. He was pretty mad about that. I think I had to clean the floors and bathrooms at the shop for a month. Sorry, she said with a laugh dot. Of course you got off scot-free. He poked her shoulder with his index finger. It was your idea, she said, grabbing his hand to push it away. There it was. That twinge in his heart when their fingers touched. It had always been there. He remembered that day in the excavator, too and he remembered how much trouble he had gotten in. But he also remembered the feel of her sitting close to him and his hand on hers as he showed her how the gears worked in the machine. He cleared his throat and pushed away thoughts of scooting closer to her now. So, what kind of job are you looking for? Anything really, she gave a shake of her head. I started applying for jobs in the spring, hoping I would have something set up before graduation. Obviously that didn't happen. I didn't know you were applying for jobs. I haven't heard much from you in the last year. Julie put her hand on his arm. I'm sorry, I know I wasn't good at keeping in touch. I was just focused on finishing up school. 
but I'm in town for, she rolled her eyes up to the ceiling, for however long. So we can hang out. Hanging out wasn't exactly what he wanted, but he would take that over nothing. Sure, he agreed. Let's hang out. He tilted his head back and drank the rest of his coffee in two gulps. But now I've got to get to work. It's good to see you, Travis. You too, Julie. I'm serious, let's do something. Text me later, and we'll plan it. Sounds good. He pointed at her computer. You know, this is a small town. If you're looking for a job, you should close that thing and walk around town. You tell a few people you're looking for something, and you'll have a job by the end of the week. She nodded slowly, but didn't say anything. Travis nodded too. He knew what that nod meant. He held his hand up in a wave and walked out the door thinking about Julie. She wanted more. More than this town, more than a small town job. More than him. Chapter 2 Julie watched Travis walk out the door. It wasn't a bad sight. He hadn't exactly been scrawny in high school, but now that they were older his look was more manly. His jeans fit him just right and she could see by the way his polo shirt with the words right construction rentals on the chest tightened around his bicep that he was still a fan of working out. She sighed and grinned at the same time thinking about the times they'd spent together over the years. His parents and hers had been friends since they were kids, so there wasn't a time in her life that she remembered not knowing Travis. From pulling her pigtail and tossing a frog in her face to being in the same group for prom, Travis had always been there. They had promised to keep in touch when she left for what he called fancy college which just meant a big school somewhere outside of Twin Creeks, and he went to business school online, while he worked at his dad's company. For a while they had kept in touch. She would see him on weekends that she was home, and they talked on the phone and texted from time to time. Travis even came to see her at school one weekend. She pressed an index finger to her temple remembering that weekend. She had been glad to see him but she was also busy flirting with a guy she had met at school. Travis had been awkward and seemed out of place in the college town. She told herself that maybe he was just part of her life in Twin Creeks, and it was too hard to bring him into her circle at school. They had never talked about that weekend. She had wanted to make sure he was all right, but it felt too strange to bring it up, so she just let it go. But she noticed his calls became less frequent after that. Maybe now that she was home they could get back to the friendship they'd always had. At least while she was still in town. But for now she needed to focus on what was next for her. She turned her attention back to the computer and clicked through the list of potential jobs she had found. She typed the information filling out another application and attached her resume. She tried to stay on task, but her attention had walked right out the door with her incredibly attractive childhood best friend. Asterisk, 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 Travis thanked the customer and held the door open for him as he carried out the brand new chainsaw. He smiled with satisfaction at the transaction. Not just because he'd made a sale, but because he had spoken with the man for half an hour to find out what he was looking for then helped him try out different models until he was satisfied. Helping someone find exactly the right product and knowing he was selling them a quality piece of equipment was the best part of his job. Travis walked back behind the counter and checked the computer to be sure that the sale was properly recorded. Pretty good day, huh? Adam, the store manager asked. Travis nodded. Not bad at all. We're going to have to restock those chainsaws. And I know we talked about needing more rental equipment on the lot. It needs to happen soon. I've told two people today we wouldn't have the rental they wanted until Wednesday. Travis shook his head. I hate that. I guess you're right. The phone rang and the front door opened at the same time. For the next hour they didn't slow down. Both Travis and Adam helped customers at the counter and answered the phone multiple times. When the last customer walked out, Adam turned to Travis. You know what I'm going to say, don't you? Travis scrunched his eyebrows and looked at him. No, what? We need to hire more help for the front. Travis rubbed his chin and looked out over the showroom. I guess we have been busy. 
and you're not even supposed to be out here. But I can't handle it by myself. He held his hands up. I'm not trying to tell you how to run your business. I know. You're right though. I've been thinking about it for a long time. It just hasn't seemed like the right time. A thought crossed his mind, and he knew he wouldn't be able to push it away. But I think the time is right now. And I think I know just the person. Chapter 3 Julie's phone rang just as she walked out of the coffee shop. She juggled her laptop bag and dug in her purse to find the phone. She was surprised to see Travis' name on the screen. Pleasantly surprised. Hello. You know how I said if you're looking for a job, you just need to tell a few people in town. Julie stopped on the sidewalk and tilted her head. Yeah. Well, turns out you just needed to tell one person. Who? Julie put her hand on her hip, not sure where this was going. Dot. Me you? Who do you know that's hiring? Her heart lurched in excitement at the thought of a job. But did he mean here? Was that really what she wanted? As a matter of fact, I'm hiring. At Wright Construction Rentals. Yep. I need someone to work at the front counter and in the showroom. Help customers, answer the phone, and fill orders. It might not be exactly the kind of retail store you thought you would work in, but it's a job. Julie bit her lip and stared at the ground. I'm not looking for a pity job. Oh no, of course not. I'm not offering out of pity. I really need someone. We were overrun with customers this morning, and we've been thinking about hiring someone for a long time. I just hadn't found the perfect fit yet. And I'm the perfect fit. There was a short pause, and she heard him clear his throat before he said, Sure, I think so. I mean, you can try it out, anyway. Julie let out a long, hum, as she thought. I've put in lots of applications. And I was really getting excited about the possibility of a new city. I understand. But this could be something for now. Maybe it works out, and if you're still looking for something else, well, I understand that. There was a tone in his voice that held a hint of sadness and resignation. I don't know anything about equipment. Other than how to run it into a building, of course. Travis let out a laugh, and it did something funny to her heart. That's fine. I can teach you what you need to know. We'll figure it out together. Julie told herself for once not to think about it. All right, sure. I'll take it. Great. She could hear Travis hit his hand on the counter, a tell that he was really excited about something. Can you start tomorrow? Sure. What should I wear? I'll tell you, but I have a feeling you're not going to like it. The next morning Julie stared at herself in the mirror. Her dark jeans and pink striped button-down shirt weren't what she expected to be wearing on her first day at a new job out of college. But since nothing was going as she expected, that seemed fitting. She cringed as she slipped on her grey tennis shoes, but Travis had insisted she needed to wear them to be comfortable. Dot. You'll be on your feet all day and walking around a lot, he had said. At least I can wear my cute earrings, she told herself. She grabbed her purse and headed out the door, sneaking past the kitchen so she didn't have to talk to her mom before she left. The digital bell sounded as she opened the door and walked into Wright Construction Rentals. She saw Travis's head snap up from where he sat at the counter. His face lit up as he grinned at her from across the room. Good morning, he called out Dot. Good morning, she replied, making her way to where he sat on the stool behind the counter. Adam, this is Julie Hughes. He gestured to the man on the other stool. Julie, this is Adam, my store manager. Nice to meet you, Julie said, nodding at the man Dot. Nice to meet you too. But more than that, I'm glad to have somebody on board to help me around here. The business must really be growing. Julie held the straps of her purse with one hand as she glanced around the showroom, and then back at Travis. His expression was solid, but there was pride in his eyes. Adam spoke for him as he stood and patted Travis on the back. This kid right here has expanded it beyond what I would have thought. His dad did a great job of building it from scratch, 
so he gets plenty of credit. But Travis, he's taking it to a new level. I have excellent staff, and we work hard to keep our customers happy. He brushed off the praise. Julie smiled. Travis had never liked being the one in the spotlight. I just hope you can teach me the difference between an excavator and a skid steer. A broad smile spread over Travis' face. The fact that you know the names and that there's a difference is a great start. I might have done some internet research last night. I'll show you the ropes today, but Adam here knows everything. So if you have any questions, and I'm not around, he's your guy. Adam touched the brim of the baseball cap he wore with a lawnmower logo on it. Yes ma'am, happy to help. Thanks. I'm sure I'm going to have plenty of questions. But I'll do my best to keep up. Travis stood. Come on, you can put your purse back here, then I'll show you around. Julie walked around the counter and put her purse in the cabinet on the bottom. Then turned to look at Travis. She caught him looking her over with the familiar grin from his teenage years. How much did you hate wearing the tennis shoes to come to work? She rolled her eyes at him. It's fine. Travis let out a laugh. I've seen your shoe collection. Let's just say that I might have to buy some cuter tennis shoes if I'm going to be wearing them all the time. Did I tell you I ordered you some work shirts? Julie grimaced and glanced from Travis to Adam who both wore the same polo shirts with the company logo on the left chest. The only difference was the colors. Does everybody wear the same shirts? She asked, groaning inwardly at the thought. Yep. Travis turned and walked through a door leading outside, Julie followed behind him, and the door closed. His eyes twinkled as he looked back at her and said, But don't worry, I ordered yours in pink. Julie blushed the same color as she felt his nearness. You remember my favorite color. Sure, he shrugged. I remember everything. She let that sentence linger in her mind as they walked across the gravel lot dozens of heavy construction machines dotted the lot and Travis began pointing them out, naming each one. You'll learn as you go, but most people know what they want when they come in. So if they say they want to rent a telehandler or a backhoe, you'll just look in the system. The guys out here know, but you should be familiar with them too. I might need flashcards. Travis laughed. I'm sure we can come up with something. They spent a long time walking the lot and going over the available machines. Julie watched him in awe as he pointed out the uses of each item, how many they had, and how many were already rented out at the moment. He really was running a successful business here. She couldn't help but feel proud of her friend. Let's head inside and I'll show you what they're doing in the warehouse. Then I'll get you set up on the computers. She stared at his heavy work boots as she followed behind him, and when they reached the building, he held the door open and waited until she walked through. Inside, her eyes grew wide at the size of the building. Whoa, I don't think I've ever been back here. Probably not, he stepped close behind her as he closed the door, and she scooted away at the sound of his voice. My dad never let me come back here as a kid. He said it was too dangerous for me. He chuckled. But really I think he was more afraid I would break something expensive. Julie shook her head as she laughed. He wasn't wrong. Travis put his hand to the back of his head. Yeah, I guess not. I didn't see much back here until I graduated from high school. He pointed as he began to walk again. We do small engine repairs too, so things like lawn mowers and chainsaws are also back here. We have three mechanics, and they work on those as well as the bigger equipment. Before they headed to the front, Julie had met five more employees and seen more parts of machinery than she could have imagined. We have three truck drivers who deliver equipment and four high school students who work part-time cleaning equipment and doing general cleaning and straightening up around the building. Wow, Julie said, following him to the showroom. What? Travis stopped and turned so quickly that she almost ran into him. I just didn't know you had so many employees. You have a really big business here, Travis. He nodded. Yeah, I know. No, I mean, this is a big deal. I saw this place when we were kids, 
and your dad ran a small business. But Travis, this is, well, it's big. He grinned, seeming pleased at her surprise. I've worked hard the last few years. God has blessed the business. She put her hand on his arm and waited for his eyes to meet hers. I know that's true, it's obvious he's blessed it. But you deserve credit for the work you've done. He took a deep breath and seemed to be steadying himself. Thanks, Julie. That means a lot to me. She could feel her fingers tingling against his arm, and she pulled away. She swallowed quickly and said, Well, it's true. And I want you to know I appreciate you offering me this job. It means a lot that you would take a chance on me when I don't know anything about this. He smiled and turned into the boy she had known for so long. You'll do great. You were always so smart. How do you think I made it through high school biology class? You studied with me until we had memorized the scientific names of all those plants and animals. Exactly. You'll do the same thing here. And I'll quiz you on machine type and engine size if you need me to. Sure, she said. Sounds good. Come on, let's see how you do on the computer system. Julie sat on the stool for what felt like hours, watching him click through the rental and sales systems. She could feel her eyes glazing over when the bell sounded, and she looked up to see a man carrying a tray of sandwiches in one hand and the handle of a styrofoam cooler in the other. Hey, Travis, he said. Hey, Joel. You can set everything down here on the counter. What's this? Julie asked. Her stomach growled on cue as she looked at the food. It's the first Tuesday of the month. We provide lunch for all the employees. Oh wow, Julie said. That's nice of you. I like to take care of my people. Julie watched his face as he spoke, and for maybe the first time she realized that they were both grown up now. Sure, there were still traces of the boy she grew up with, but he wasn't a kid anymore. He was a responsible businessman. She blinked and told herself to focus. Great. I'm starving. The phone rang then. I'll grab that, Travis said. Can you take the food and set it up on the tables in the warehouse? Sure. Julie thanked the delivery guy and lifted the tray of sandwiches. She headed through the door into the warehouse, glad for the moment to have a little space from Travis. Who was this guy who had been her best friend her whole life, and why did he seem so different than she remembered him? Her thoughts drifted to the thrill that had shot through her when he placed his hand on her back earlier, and she shook her head. No, she had never thought of him that way, and she wouldn't start now. She was here to work. It was nice to see that her friend was doing so well, and she was immensely proud of him. And she hoped they would always be friends. Just friends. The clock ticked down to five o'clock and Travis was still with a customer, as was often the case. Out of the corner of his eye he saw that Julie was staring intently at the computer. He guessed she was still familiarizing herself with the software. He finished up and walked the man to the door then turned to Julie at the counter dot. Well, how do you feel about your first day? Julie startled and turned to look at him. Is it five already? Almost five-thirty, he said dot. Oh, I was concentrating and didn't notice. Do you have any questions? No, not right now. I probably will later. But it helps me just to play around with it and figure it out as a go. I'm a hands-on learner. Travis nodded. We can shut it down now. He reached past her and clicked a few buttons on the screen. Adam already checked all the end-of-the-day balances, so we just need to close it out. He could smell her perfume as he leaned in to shut down the system, notes of vanilla and cherry filled his senses. He briefly closed his eyes as he breathed it in. Then he hit the last button and reluctantly put some distance between them. Do you have plans? I thought we could celebrate your first day with dinner. Julie's face showed her surprise. Oh, that sounds nice. No, I don't have plans. Great, let's go then. My treat. But you already bought my lunch today. He shook his head. The company bought you lunch. I'd like to buy your dinner. Julie slowly slid off the stool and reached for her purse. 
All right, I guess I can do that. Travis set the alarm then ushered her out the door as the warning beeped behind them. Julie headed towards her car parked in the last spot, but he tugged her arm towards him. Dot. Just come ride with me. I'll bring you back. She gave him a look, but followed him. I hope you're a better driver than when you were seventeen. A lot has changed since then, he said as they climbed in. As they both shut their doors, she looked over at him. I've noticed. Good. The word hung in the air, and it seemed heavy for a moment. Then he cleared his throat and started the car. He didn't ask where she wanted to go for dinner. He didn't have to. When he pulled into the local Mexican restaurant, all she said was, Oh, perfect. Once they were seated at a table with chips and salsa in front of them, he started out with an easy question. So, do you think you'll like it at work? You seem to be getting the hang of things pretty well. Thanks. I do think I'll like it. It's not what I expected, but at this point, what is? He ate another chip and chewed it as he mulled over his thoughts. So what exactly did you expect after graduation? She folded her arms on top of the table and leaned in. Honestly? Sure, I think we've always been honest with each other. So, I thought I would graduate, get married, and I was sure I would find a job and begin working. You know I've always wanted to have a husband and a family. She sighed. I just thought I would meet someone in college, you know? He ducked his head and looked away. Yeah, I guess. That's what I expected. To be getting married and starting a new life. But you didn't meet anyone? She raised her palms to the ceiling. I met people, I dated a little. But no one that was, you know, what, he pried more dot. Well, it sounds cheesy, I guess, but I didn't meet anyone who was the one. Yeah, he said. She looked at him as if he understood, so he grinned and said, it does sound cheesy. She wadded up a napkin and threw it at him. Anyway, I guess it's time to figure out what I want besides that. Have you prayed about it? She stared at him. Kind of, sort of. She paused. Maybe not that much. You should try that. Really, her tone was sarcastic. Since when are you the one who talks about praying? He shrugged. I've always prayed. She leaned back and crossed her arms. Hmm, have you? I know we both grew up in church, but you weren't exactly the perfect church boy. He looked up at her, his expression serious. I know. But I've grown up. I've always believed in God, but I've had lots of time to grow in my faith too. I want to be a godly man and follow him and his plan for my life. That's nice, Julie said slowly. And so this is his plan for you then? Stay here in Twin Creeks and run the family business? Travis nodded. Yep, I think so. I think it must be, since you're doing so well. I know this will sound cheesy too, but since I've already been cheesy I might as well continue. I'm proud of you, Travis. Really. You're doing well for yourself, and I'm happy for you. Thanks. I'm happy too. But I would also be happy if you didn't move off to another city and ignore me again. I never ignored you. He laughed. Nah, I know you didn't. We just grew apart with the distance. That happens. But I'm here now. So we can be friends like always. Travis heard the word, and it was like a knife to his heart. Of course, they had always been friends. That's what she had always wanted, wasn't it? Sure, we can. He forced himself to smile, and the server came to take their order. They reminisced through dinner about high school memories and passed stories back and forth from their childhood. How are your parents? Julie asked him. They're good. Dad still works at the store a few days a week, but he's semi-retired now that he's got me to run the place. And Mom is still involved with church and the community center. That's nice. My parents are still pretty much the same. I know. I see them at church on Sundays, and your dad comes in the store every once in a while to rent something. Really? Julie's eyebrows shot up. What does he rent? 
I can't imagine him using anything like that. Mostly smaller tools, like an auger or a trencher. Julie dropped her chin in her hand. Huh. That's interesting. I'll have to ask him what he used those for. So, here's the real question. She leaned in and waited to hear it. You think you'll still come back to work tomorrow? She leaned her head back and laughed at his expression. I suppose so. But I'd better get home. I have homework to do. Homework? Yeah, I need to make machine flashcards. Chapter 4 The next morning Julie was up early, and in a good mood. A pleasant smile set on her face as she made her way to the kitchen for coffee with time to spare before she needed to leave for work. Good morning, sweetie, her mother greeted her. Morning, mom. Julie went to the fridge for her coffee creamer and poured a generous amount in her cup before adding coffee. Are you headed to work? Yep, Julie smiled, but I've got a little time. So tell me more about this job, her mom said dot. I'm still learning, but I'm working in the store for Travis Company. Well, you know it was his dad's company, but Travis is running it now. Oh, of course I know that. We see Travis all the time, and his parents too. Right. So I'll be answering the phones, helping customers, and working in the showroom. That sounds nice. I didn't expect you to be working around construction equipment. Julie laughed. I didn't either, but maybe this is where God wants me to be. At least for now. She shrugged. Elise gave her a knowing look. Mom, she pressed her lips together in a secretive smile before she took a sip of her coffee dot. What? Julie asked. I'm just wondering, how do you like seeing Travis again? Julie knew where this was going, but she pretended not to. It's nice. We haven't talked in a while, but seeing him again it's like we just picked up where we left off. That's nice. Yes, it is. Travis is very nice. Mom, Julie looked away as she drank her coffee dot. Very, very nice. And very successful, and the kind of guy that you can depend on. Mom, Julie glared at her now dot. What? I know what you're doing. But it's not going to happen. Her mom set her coffee on the counter and pouted. Why not? Because, Mom, I could never, you know, be with him. Again, I ask, why not? We've been friends for forever, and I know him too well to think of him like that. Or maybe you know him well enough to think of him like that. Julie shook her head. That doesn't make any sense. Who have you known longer than Travis? Julie shrugged. Probably no one. At least no one besides you, Dad, and Ally, she said of her sister. That's true. So, it would just be weird to think of him as anything besides a friend. Elise held her hands up, all right, I won't push you. I'll just say that romantic relationships work best when they have a foundation of friendship. Julie wanted to roll her eyes at her mother, but refrained. Still she knew that Travis would always be the boy who threw a rock at her in fifth grade and made her head bleed, and the same teenager who toilet papered her house during homecoming week. She just didn't see him as someone she would fall for. Besides, now she had to work with him so she needed to keep things straight in her mind. She whispered a prayer and thanked God for leading her in a new direction with a new job that gave her a challenge. And she thanked God for her good friend, Travis. Asterisk 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 I've made a decision, Julie said as she pushed the basket of tortilla chips towards Travis. It was Tuesday night, and over the past few weeks they had made a tradition of coming to the Mexican restaurant for dinner on Tuesdays. And what's that? I'm signing up with a dating app. Travis felt his face go white as his heart dropped to his stomach. What, his voice was barely above a whisper. I'm signing up with a dating app. Okay, I guess I did hear you right. I just couldn't fathom that that was actually what you said. He gripped the edge of the table with both hands to keep from shouting out his displeasure. Yep, you heard me. But you can't be serious. Oh, I am. I've thought about it, and I've even prayed about it, which was your suggestion by the way, she pointed her index finger at him. 
and if I want to meet someone, I need to look for them. But Julie, really? A dating app? She shrugged and smiled as if she wasn't flipping his world upside down. Sure. You know it's kind of like a job application. If you want a job you have to put your resume out in the world. If you want to date someone, maybe it's a good idea to let people know you exist. He stared at her in utter shock. Julie, that sounds terrible. She waved a hand in the air. Oh, no it doesn't. Besides, this is how people do things nowadays. Even if it wasn't a dating app, people meet each other online. Yes, and didn't your mother teach you to never ever meet someone that you met on the internet in person? He could feel his heart pounding at the thought of her meeting random guys from a dating app. Don't worry so much, it will be fine. She reached out and patted his hand, sending electricity through his body. I'll be safe. I'll meet them in public places, and I'll be careful. But Julie, you're better than this. You don't have to resort to a dating app. She stared straight into his eyes, and he watched as she took in a deep breath and then blew it out. Don't say that. I spent four years in college, single and available. And no one noticed me. At least not anyone worth it. So maybe they weren't interested, but maybe it just never crossed their mind to ask me out. Well now I can put my name and profile up and let people know I'm interested in being asked out. She paused and Travis started to say something, but she held up her hand. No, don't try to talk me out of it. I've already decided. And like I said, I prayed about it, and I feel like it's fine for me to do. Travis dropped his head for a few moments. When he looked up, he could see the determination in her eyes. But he could be determined too. Here's the deal. If you do this, which I wish you wouldn't, he sighed. But if you do, I have to look over the profiles of the guys. You also have to tell me when you're going on a date, where you're going, and let me know when you get home. And if I haven't heard from you, I will come and find you or call the police. Julie sat back in her chair and laughed. I'm serious, he slapped his hand on the table dot. She covered her mouth with her hand and laughed harder. Julie, this is not a joke. I know, I know, she waved a hand and tried to stifle her laughter. It's just your face, it's so, so, she seemed like she couldn't find the word dot. Serious, he said, his stare cold. Yes, exactly. Julie, he leaned across the table as far as he could and Julie stopped laughing. I'm very serious. I mean it, you have to tell me, and you have to be careful. I don't like this, and I won't pretend to. But you have to tell me so I can make sure you're safe. All right, she said quietly. She pointed her index finger in his face, but you have to promise you won't show up and spy on me. He smiled now. It's a deal. He held out his hand and waited for her to shake it. She took his hand, and he watched her face, ignoring how it made him feel inside to be this close to her, and to have her hand in his. All that mattered in that moment was her safety. All right then, he gave her that mischievous grin. Let's talk about your profile. She groaned. No, I don't think so. Yep. Here, give me your phone. What app are you going to use? No, Travis, don't, she whined. Sure, I can help you. Who knows you better than I do? No one, she resigned. Fine, besides, she tossed her hair over her shoulder. I can always delete what you do and change the profile later. Travis narrowed his eyes at her and reached across the table to snatch the phone from her. Let's see what we have for a profile picture. He started scrolling through pictures on her phone. No. She reached for her phone and he pulled it away. Her hand landed in the salsa on the table and tipped the bowl. He stared wide-eyed at Julie and the mess, then he burst out laughing. It's not funny, she said, but she was laughing too. You should be more careful, he said dot. You shouldn't take people's phones without permission. She wiped her hand with a napkin and tried to scrape the salsa back into the bowl. Fair enough, he placed the phone on the table. He had seen enough to find out that she had been taking selfies for the exact purpose that he was looking through her pictures. 
when he saw her sweet smile looking at him, with her lipstick a tempting shade of pink, he couldn't think about any other man looking at those pictures and asking her for a date. It made him sick to his stomach. He desperately tried to think of a way to change the subject, but no new topics came to mind. Julie rescued him, but not in the way he hoped. You know, we could make you a profile on here too, she raised her eyebrows and tilted her head at him. No, he said. Absolutely not. There are probably plenty of girls on here who would go out with you. He looked her straight in the eyes. I'm not interested in those girls. She held up her hands. Okay, okay. Take it easy. Travis didn't know if he would take it easy any time soon. He couldn't imagine resting for a minute knowing her profile was out there just waiting for guys to see it. Chapter 5 Friday evening Julie closed down the computer and stood up from her stool. Everything good? Travis came through the back door and asked. Yep, looks good. She grabbed her purse without looking at him. I'm headed out. See you tomorrow. I'm leaving too, I'll walk out with you. Okay, she said, still avoiding his gaze. He held the door open for her and locked it as it closed behind him. I'll see you tomorrow, she said. He held up a hand to wave, and she climbed in her car and shut the door before he could say anything else. She hurried home and went straight upstairs to her room. Before work she had laid out the perfect outfit on her bed. She kicked off her tennis shoes and went to the bathroom to freshen her makeup and brush her hair. In twenty minutes she was dressed in a pale pink summer dress with her favorite wedges, her brown hair hung at her shoulders, and the dangly earrings she wore swished with her movement. She smiled at herself in the mirror and grabbed her purse. She knew what she had to do, so she reached for her phone and typed out a text to Travis. I'm going on a date. Valley Diner at 6.15. I'll text you when I get back. She held her breath as she sent it and tried not to imagine the look on his face when he got it. Even though she had agreed to tell him she was going on a date, she hadn't agreed to how much advance notice she'd give. But it wasn't long before she heard the reply come through. I didn't look over his profile dot. Did I agree to that? She typed back. I said it. That was part of our deal, came his response. Oops, sorry. Maybe next time. She dropped her phone in her purse and headed out the door. The drive to the local diner took her out of her neighborhood and through the main part of town. The guy she was meeting wasn't from Twin Creeks, but he had agreed to meet her there. She looked at her messages in the app and saw that her date had messaged her that he was there waiting at a table. Butterflies fluttered all over her stomach, and she tried to tell herself it was more excitement than nerves. Inside she told the hostess she was meeting someone and smoothed a hand over her dress as she stepped into the dining room to look for him. She glanced at the back table, and there was the man from the picture she had seen on the app. She put on her best smile as she made her way over. He saw her, but remained seated as he said, Hey, I'm Garrett. Hi Garrett, I'm Julie. It's nice to meet you in person, he said. You too. Julie took a seat and saw that he already had a drink in front of him. The waitress appeared and placed an appetizer on the table. Here you go, she said. Can I get you something to drink? She asked Julie. Dot. Um, just water please. Julie watched as Garrett dug into the plate of nachos on the table. I'm sorry, was I late? We did say 6.15 didn't we? Oh yeah, you're good. I just got here a few minutes ago. Oh good, I was afraid maybe you had been waiting a long time. Julie couldn't think of another reason he would have ordered a drink and appetizer without waiting for her to arrive. Dot. Nah, no problem, he said, stuffing another bite in his mouth. She waited for him to say something else, or even to offer her a bite of food. But he didn't. She cleared her throat and said, So, Garrett, tell me about yourself. Well, you saw my profile, right? Um, yes. It says you work in business. What do you do? Yeah, I work in business. What kind of business? The business of making money, he cackled around the food in his mouth, 
and wiped the back of his hand across his lips before taking a long drink. I'm just messing with you. I work in lawn care. We're real busy in the summer. I do the spraying for bugs and fertilizing the grass for Buddy's lawn care. You heard of it. Actually, she had. They had a bad reputation in her parents' neighborhood, where they had destroyed several lawns before word spread. Mom, I have, she left it at that. What do you do, he asked. I work in retail for a rental company. Oh yeah? What do you rent? Fancy cars or limousines or something. Julie suddenly felt like she didn't want to give him any more details about her life. Something like that. And you live around here, he said, taking another bite of food. Dot. Yeah, I grew up in the area. She made a mental note to schedule her dates further from home in the future. I've been through here a time or two. But I live out in Brookside. Lived there my whole life. My folks are still there too. Brookside was known as a country town in the middle of nowhere. Dot. So you have family? Julie asked. Dot. Yeah, parents, grandparents, aunts, you know. We all live on the property. They've all been hoping I'll find a wife and pop out some grandkids to play around the place. Julie hoped her eyes didn't actually grow as wide as she felt from the inside. That's nice, she finally managed to say. She had always heard of people sneaking out the back in the middle of a date, and she'd never been able to imagine that before. Now she found herself wondering how easy it would be. The waitress returned with her drink and asked, Are you ready to order? Yes, Julie said. She wasn't, but knew she could decide quickly if it would move this date along. Yeah, me too, Garrett said. I'll have a steak, rare with baked potato and extra butter. Julie ran her eyes over the menu and picked the first thing that sounded remotely edible. Grilled chicken Caesar salad please. She snapped the menu shut and handed it to the waitress. When the waitress was gone, Garrett said, Are you one of those healthy salad people? She shrugged. Not really. I enjoy a number of different foods, but I do like salad sometimes. You kind of look like a healthy salad girl. Julie forced a smile and prayed that God would get her through this meal. Thankfully, Garrett was a fast eater, and he was more focused on the food than her. So what you think, want to get together again, he asked. I'm not sure, Julie didn't want to be rude. But it was nice to meet you. All right then, I'll just get the check, and we can split it. Julie gritted her teeth together, and watched as he waved the waitress over, and asked her to divide up the meal between two tickets. The waitress gave Julie a sympathetic look, but Julie just smiled and nodded. Relieved to be back in the car, she let her head fall back against the headrest. She didn't waste any time checking her phone to see that she had a two texts from Travis. Dot. I'll be waiting for your text. Dot. And you have to tell me about this date. Dot. She half wanted to laugh and half wanted to cry, so she hit the button to call Travis. Julie? Is everything all right? His voice was filled with concern. She had to laugh at that. Yes, everything is fine. I'm leaving my so called date. But you know, when we were in high school, my friends and I had three rules for a date, he asks, he picks you up, and he pays. I guess he gets a point for asking, if asking on an app counts, but none of the other conditions were met. He didn't pay. She could tell Travis was in disbelief. Nope. He asked the waitress to split it. So tell me more. Travis, it was awful. Why did I think this was a good idea? I have no idea, because I told you it was a bad idea. She rolled her eyes. Yeah, yeah, I know. You're always right. So are you giving it up then? Well, oh, come on, you just agreed it's a bad idea. But just because it was one bad date doesn't mean all of them will be. Travis let out an exasperated sigh. Do you already have another date? She bit her lip, not wanting to tell him, but knew she couldn't lie. Yes. He messaged me while the current date was in the bathroom. I figured nothing could be worse than that one. His tone was dry. You might be surprised. Chapter 6 
Travis spent the weekend trying to keep from imagining Julie on her horrible date. On the one hand, he was glad it had gone badly, and she wasn't seeing the guy again. But on the other hand, just knowing she had made plans, gotten dressed up, and met another man for dinner made his body pulse with jealousy. Couldn't she see that he was right in front of her? That he'd always been there? Travis let out a sigh as he picked up his keys and walked out the door for work. It was his own fault, of course. He was the one who hadn't told her how he felt. But after all this time, it felt like it might be too late. When he saw her that day at the coffee shop, he'd been filled with hope that they could spend time together and finally kindle the relationship into something new. That was before she told him about her dating app plans. Travis couldn't put his finger on what exactly it was that Julie was looking for, but he felt certain that he and this town weren't it. He put on a smile as he climbed out of his car and walked into work. Julie sat at the counter with a cup of coffee in her hand. Good morning, she smiled. Dot. Morning, he replied. I see that Adam informed you that it's your job to make the coffee in the morning. She laughed. Yes, I figured it was fair since I'm likely to drink as much of it as anyone. Travis held his empty travel mug up in the air. I might give you a run for your money. Headed for a second cup. Help yourself. He made his way to the break room and filled his cup before he returned to the front. How was your weekend? he asked. They had texted a few times, but he hadn't spoken to her since her call after her date Friday night. Fine. She shrugged. Mostly catching up on laundry and running errands. Nothing terribly exciting. His mind swirled, hoping she hadn't met any new guys to date over the weekend. And now back to the grind. Yep, sure thing. Any other exciting plans this week? he asked, even though he wasn't sure he wanted to know. Julie avoided making eye contact. I told you I have another date. It's Wednesday. Now that hurt. You're skipping our Mexican night. She bit her lip. I know. I'm sorry. Travis was sorry too. Sorry that he had let her think they were just friends all these years. And sorry that it was too late to do anything about that now. Since she had told herself not to make her dates close to home again, Julie had scheduled this date thirty minutes away in the next town. When she walked in, she scanned the room for him. He politely waved from a nearby table. She immediately noticed his dress slacks, button-up shirt and tie. He stood as she walked to the table and reached out and took her hand as he introduced himself. I'm Jason. Nice to meet you, Jason. I'm Julie. I'm so glad we could get together. Please, have a seat. Julie smiled as he waited for her to be seated before he returned to his seat and placed his napkin in his lap. How was your drive? It was fine, thanks. The waitress came and took their drink orders and asked if they wanted an appetizer to start dot. Have you been here before, he asked. No, I haven't. Then I recommend the appetizer sampler, so you can try everything if that's okay with you. Sure, that sounds good, Julie smiled. He nodded at the waitress, and she left them to put in the order. Julie looked at Jason. She had thought he was good looking in his profile picture, but those often weren't a great representation of the real person. In this case, it was an exact replica. He looked nice and put together. She felt a glimmer of hope. So tell me about what you do, Jason. I'm an attorney. I work downtown at Newell Law Associates. What kind of law do you practice? Mostly estate law. And what about you? I just graduated from college, so I moved back to town, and I'm still looking for a permanent job, but I'm working right now at a retail and rental equipment store. That sounds like a good start. Julie looked down at her menu. What do you recommend to eat here? I used to come here all the time with my ex-wife. She liked the chicken Alfredo. Julie thought she couldn't possibly have heard that right. Your ex-wife? She asked despite the fact that she told herself not to dot. Yes, we finalized our divorce six months ago. But it's been a difficult road. 
Oh, Julie swallowed to keep from showing the awkwardness she felt. I'm so sorry to hear that. I really did love her. But she wanted different things in life. One of those things turned out to be a different person. Oh no. Julie didn't know what else to say, so she stared at her menu. I guess these things happen. She was a paralegal in my office. We met in college, though, and she decided to become a paralegal when I went to law school. I thought she would work for me, and she did for a little while. But then she decided it would be better for our marriage if she worked in a different office, so we didn't see each other all day every day. He paused and his eyes grew sad and then she decided it would be better for our lives if we didn't see each other at all. Julie wasn't sure whether to reach for her keys or a tissue. But when the waitress returned with the appetizer, she said she wasn't very hungry, and the appetizers looked like plenty of food for her. She made it through the sampler as quickly as possible, and made a quick exit, as soon as Jason finished telling her how he and his ex-wife got engaged. Chapter 7 Julie had pushed the time to seven to give herself time to get home from work and make it to the restaurant. Now she tapped her toe as she sat alone at the table. She had already been there over an hour, but her date had messaged her multiple times telling her he was on the way. Her stomach growled over and over again, and she almost ordered food. But her mother's etiquette rules about not ordering before someone arrives kept jumping into her mind, and she couldn't do it. When it was an hour and a half past their meeting time, she stood and walked out of the restaurant. She grabbed her phone and called Travis. Hey, is everything all right? Are you going to ask me that every time I call you from a date? Tell me if everything is all right, and then I'll answer your question. I'm fine. Then yes, I'm going to ask it every time. It's an important question, and I don't want to wait on the phone for the answer. I need to know. So, was this date better, or worse than the last one? I guess I have to say neither, because he didn't show up for me to find out. What? He stood you up. Julie threw her hands into the air as she sat in her car. I guess so. He messaged me twice saying he was late, and he'd be there soon. But it's been over an hour and he's not here. So I'm leaving. Did you eat? Nope. I thought about it, but I didn't want the waiters to watch me eat by myself after I waited that long for him to come. What a jerk, Travis said. Where are you? Hopeville, Julie said of the place two towns over dot. Why did you go there? I was trying to be safe and not meet people close to home. It sounded like a good idea at the time. Until I sat alone and left hungry. We can fix that. I can leave now, meet me at Creekside Cafe. Thanks, but I'm tired, I really don't feel like sitting in another restaurant. I just want to go home. But you need to eat. Just come to my house, and I'll go pick up takeout. Anything particular you want? No, just food. See you in thirty minutes. I'll text you the address. Julie heard him drop the phone, and knew he was already headed out the door. She should have told him no, she was just going home. But she was too hungry to argue. Plus, she didn't want to go home and have her mom ask her why she was fixing a sandwich when she had gone out to dinner. She pulled into Travis' driveway and stared at the house in front of her. She had been to his parents' house so many times over the years that when he said come to my house, that's what she had envisioned. She knew he lived on his own now, but still, it felt strange to think of him living anywhere but his parents' house. It was a nice neighborhood, and all the houses looked fairly new. His house was brick, and the yard was well manicured. His car was in the driveway, so she got out and walked to the front door. Travis must have been watching for her because the front door swung open, and he stepped outside. He padded out to meet her in his bare feet, wearing athletic shorts and a t-shirt. It looked like he had been relaxing before she called. She lifted the corners of her mouth into a smile, but it didn't reach her eyes. He must have noticed, because he came forward and enveloped her into a hug. The surprise and force of it took her breath away. He smelled of pine soap, 
which he must have showered in recently since his hair was still slightly wet. I'm so sorry, Julie. She shrugged as he stepped back, and she tried to hide her disappointment that the hug hadn't lasted longer. It's okay. No, he said sternly then waited until she looked him in the eye. It's not. No one should be that rude or treat you that way. Thank you, Travis. You're a really good friend. She smiled and asked, now where's my food? He chuckled and turned to point toward the house. She stepped through the doorway and her heels echoed on the hardwood floors. She would have stopped to be impressed with the high ceilings and the simple but elegant decorations on the walls, but her hunger overcame her. When she walked into the living room, she spotted a bag from a local sandwich shop on the coffee table. Oh, thank you. I love Mr. P's Deli. I know. I got you a club sandwich. I hope that's all right. It's perfect. She kicked off her shoes, took a seat on the couch, and began to devour the sandwich. I'm sorry, I'm just going to dig in. Tell me about your day while I eat. But you know about my day. We work together, remember? Yeah, but I wasn't with you all day. And I don't know what you did when you left work. Maybe you had your own hot date. She paused, one who actually showed up. Nope, he said. No date. Not even one who never showed. I left work, came home, made dinner and ate. Then I went for a run, showered, and I was just watching TV when I got a call to rescue someone. Hey, I didn't ask you to rescue me. No, but you could have. I would have come. Thanks, she patted his arm. I appreciate it. Although, feeding me is pretty much rescuing me right now. Glad I could help. What were you watching? Just now. When I called. Julie said around the bite of sandwich. I think you would call it one of those guy movies with a lot of shooting. She gestured to the TV. You can turn it back on. Nah. You hate that stuff. Yeah, but I'm crashing your evening, so it's fine. Really? Travis lowered his eyebrows as he turned to her dot. Sure. If you change your mind, I can turn it off. He clicked the show back on, and the volume of the TV surprised Julie. She almost dropped her sandwich. Travis laughed, sorry. How can you listen to that so loud? I probably turned it up at a quieter part, and didn't notice when it got louder. Julie nodded and settled back on the couch as she finished her sandwich. She planned to eat and leave. But when she was done with her food, she let her head fall back on the couch. Want a blanket? Travis asked Dot. Sure, she said, her eyes still on the TV. She had been trying to figure out why he found this interesting, but now she couldn't look away. Travis handed her a blanket, and she tucked her feet underneath her and wrapped up in the blanket. She settled in and kept her focus on the screen until the credits rolled dot. Travis didn't move, and neither did she. As another movie was about to start she said, I guess I should get going. Travis turned the TV off. You don't have to be in a rush. I don't know about that. I have to be at work in the morning, and my boss can be pretty demanding. Travis grinned. Do you really think your boss is demanding? Nah, he's a pretty nice guy, actually. Speaking of nice guys. Travis sat up and linked his hands together in front of him. He met her eyes with an intense look. Answer me this. So far you've been on two dates that were terrible, and a date where the guy didn't show up at all. But what is it you're really looking for in a guy? Oh, you know, Julie waved her hand dot. No, I don't. Tell me. Julie took a big breath and let it out. I want someone that I can get along with, someone that is mature and dependable, and has a real job. I'm looking for someone that has life goals and wants to have a family. Of course, someone who is a Christian. And someone fun that I can be comfortable talking to and enjoy spending time with. Travis nodded his head slowly. You know that sounds kind of familiar. Oh. It sounds like me. Julie snapped her head to look at him. Was he serious? Her mind raced and her pulse picked up as she looked at him. 
He smiled. But I'm not on a dating app, so no worries. Julie let out a tense laugh, but she couldn't help but wonder if he really meant it. Well boss, I need to get going. I'll let myself out, and I'll see you in the morning. She picked up her shoes to carry them out, and she hurried off before he could walk her to the door. As she climbed in her car and drove home, she thought about the list of things she had said she was looking for, and one thought consumed her. Travis Wright was all of those things. Chapter 8 Travis beat himself up all day the next day for making that comment. Why would I say that to her? I know she's not interested in me that way. Why would she be looking for guys on a dating app if she was? She sees me as a friend, and that's all she'll ever see me as. I need to just be her friend and be fine with that. He was busy working on a sales report when his phone dinged. Lunch today. The text read. It was his friend Landon. Before he could think about the stack of paper on his desk, he responded. Sure, when and where? Landon texted back to meet at Creekside Cafe at 11.30. Travis told himself not to think about the girl working the front counter downstairs and focus on his work until he could leave for lunch. That's just what he did. The morning flew by, and he looked up to see that it was time to leave. He brushed past the counter and waved at Julie, who was on the phone. Going to lunch, he whispered. She nodded and waved as she spoke to the customer. He was glad she was distracted as he made his way out the door. When he pulled into the restaurant parking lot, Landon was just getting out of the truck beside him. He greeted his friend with a handshake. What's going on, man? Landon asked. Not much, just living the dream. Landon gave him a look. We'll talk about that in a minute. Let's get some grub. Travis nodded, knowing that he couldn't hide anything from Landon. The restaurant was a mom-and-pop diner with southern favorites, and the two men made their way through the line and got their food. They carried the trays covered with fried catfish, macaroni and cheese, and fried tomatoes to the table. Landon bowed his head and waited as Travis thanked God for the food, then he launched in. I'm gonna eat. But while I do, you tell me what's eating you. How do you know? Landon shrugged. I always know. We've been friends a long time, and I can see it on your face. Business is good, so my money is on a girl. You're right. Bingo. Landon said, taking a bite of the cornbread roll. But it's just not going to happen. Why not? Who is it? That's the problem. Wait a minute, don't tell me. It's not Julie, is it? Travis hung his head. Man, how long have you been in love with her? I'm not in love with her. Yes, you are. You've been in love with her since junior high. Why have you never asked her out? Because we're friends. Yeah, but sometimes you start out as friends, and then you ask her out, and it turns into something more. Travis shook his head. No, not with Julie. We've known each other our whole lives. She was my best friend in middle school and high school and maybe I did like her, but I knew that if I asked her out and things went wrong, I would lose my best friend. It's all right, man, I'll be your best friend. Travis grinned at Landon. You know what I mean. Yeah, I do. But what's the problem now? You know she's working at the store. Yeah, I know that. So, we spend a lot of time together, but we're still just friends. Dude, okay, here's what's got to happen. You gotta ask her out. After all this time? Yes. You just do it and see what happens. Maybe she says yes, maybe she says no. But then you'll know. And if you date her and things don't work out, well then maybe she wasn't really your best friend after all. Travis looked at him. I don't know. I know you don't, that's why you just gotta do what I'm telling you. You'll never know until you try. Travis laughed, so it's that easy, huh? Landon shrugged. I don't know that it's easy, but just because it's not easy doesn't mean don't do it. Just ask and go from there. But you've liked her for years and years, and it's now or never. I don't know. 
she has this idea in her head of what she wants, and I just don't think it's me. We've known each other so long that she just doesn't see me that way. She wants this dream life that's made up in her head, and she's not looking for me. She just doesn't know that she's looking for you. But she hasn't found what she is looking for, so maybe you just need to be there, and she'll realize what's right in front of her. Travis nodded. I'll think about it. Man, stop thinking. Just do it. Finish eating, go back to the store, and ask her out. Travis spent the rest of lunch trying to focus on his friend, but the idea of walking back into work and asking Julie to go out with him was tempting. How many times had he thought about doing that when they were in high school? How many football games did he go to with her and all their friends? And how many times did he plan to ask her to homecoming or prom? But then she would tell him the guy she was hoping would ask her, and he would give up on the idea. On the drive back to the store, he thought about a weekend that he had gone to see her in college. He had made plans to stay with one of his buddies for the weekend that went to the same school, but he knew he would be with Julie most of the time. He told himself this was finally it, he was going to tell her how he felt. How he had always felt. She had seemed so excited for the visit, and when he arrived at her apartment, she came out and hugged him. It's so great to see you, I've missed you, Travis. I've missed you too. He wanted to take her in his arms right there and tell her that he had always known she was the one and ask her to be his girl forever. But she jumped back from their hug and said, come meet my friends. He followed behind her and walked in to find a group, not unlike their group of friends in high school. There was music playing and people were eating pizza and talking around the room. Julie introduced him to her friends, but when she got to one particular guy, she said, Travis, this is Riley, and the look on her face told him she liked Riley. Riley, this is my childhood friend, Travis. He's here for a visit. Nice to meet you, Travis had reached out to shake his hand. But in that moment, he knew his plans for the weekend were gone. Julie was polite and talked with him, and spent some time catching up. But her attention was with Riley, and Travis knew it. Now, he wondered every day if the same thing would happen again. Would she call him after a date to tell him how great it went, instead of how awful? He could never be sure. That is, unless he followed Landon's advice. As he walked into the building, the bell beeped over his head. Julie looked up and flashed him a smile. For once there were no customers in the place, and she wasn't on the phone. Adam wasn't even around. He took that as a sign and with a deep breath he walked up to the counter. He saw Julie's look turn playful as she said, Hi, sir, what can I do for you today? Travis put his hands on the counter, looked into her eyes and said, Would you have dinner with me on Friday night? Julie was taken aback. Her eyes went wide, and she slid her hands backward slightly on the counter. Dinner? Yes, would you have dinner with me on Friday night? He repeated his words to be clear and intentional. Tonight is Friday, she said quietly, her chin dropping and her eyes looking timid. Yes, I know. I don't want to waste any more time. She stared at the counter and fidgeted with her hands. For several seconds Travis was sure she was going to say no, then she looked up, met his eyes and said, yes, I will. Travis smiled and tapped his palm on the counter. Perfect. Then he turned and walked through the door and up the stairs to his office. Chapter 9 Julie had told herself all afternoon that it wasn't a big deal. He just wanted to go to dinner. They had been to dinner plenty of times, hadn't they? Surely he just wanted to celebrate the end of the week, or maybe make up for the string of bad dates she'd been on lately. But the look on his face had been so serious. She stood in front of her closet trying to decide what to wear. If she put on a dress, that would make it seem special and more like a big deal, but if she dressed more casually, would he think she didn't care? She walked out to her room and fell face forward on the bed. Ugh. What's wrong with you? Her sister Ally walked in the room. I'm trying to decide what to wear to dinner. What's the problem with that? Because I'm going to dinner with Travis. So, 
Julie sat up and looked at Ally, like dinner, dinner, with Travis. You mean like a date? Ally's eyebrows shot up. No, yes, maybe, oh, I don't know. You don't know if it's a date? Not really. I mean, he asked me to go to dinner with him, and he didn't say it was a date, but he was very serious about it. So it's probably a date. But we're friends, we've been friends forever, so it can't be a date. It just can't. Come on, Julie. What? You know that Travis has always liked you. No, Julie waved her hand in the air as if she could push it away. That's not true. He's always picked on me and teased me. We've just been friends. But he hasn't ever liked me. Don't you know anything about guys? That's what they do when they like you. And that whole we're friends thing? It was just because he was scared to admit it. I'm telling you, he's liked you forever. Julie stared at the wall, wondering if that could be true. But it's Travis. Travis. Ally just looked at her and laughed. Have a good time, she said as she walked from the room. Julie looked at herself in the mirror. It's not a date, she said. It's just Travis. She slipped into dark skinny jeans and a pink flowing top, and told herself not to think about it any more. The doorbell rang and Julie hurried to the stairs, but she wasn't fast enough to get to the door before her mom. Hi, Travis, she heard her mom say. Come in, come in. Julie descended the stairs and she caught his eye. When he looked at her, she knew that her sister was right. How have you been? Elise asked Travis, but Julie could hardly pay attention to his response. I'm doing just fine, Mrs. Hughes. Are you and Julie going to dinner? Yes, ma'am. Her mom turned and looked at Julie. Oh, that's nice, she said. I won't keep you. You two have a good time. She practically pushed them out the front door and closed it quickly. Hi, Julie spoke to Travis as they stood on the porch. Hi, Travis replied. Are you ready to go? Sure, where are we going? Travis wiggled his eyebrows up and down. You'll have to wait and see. He led the way to his car and he opened the passenger door for her. Julie didn't hide her surprise. Thank you. What did I do to deserve the royal treatment? Travis' voice was serious when he said, I've always treated you nicely. Julie narrowed her eyes at him and pursed her lips. Always? He grimaced. Well, once I moved past the annoying twelve-year-old stage. She laughed. I'm not sure boys ever fully outgrow that stage. True, he said, closing the door and walking around to his side. As they began the drive to the unknown destination, Travis asked, Do you want to listen to music? You can pick something. Sure, Julie replied. He handed her his phone, and she began to flip through the songs. Oh, this is a good song, she said, but kept scrolling. Oh, I love that song too, and she still kept scrolling. I haven't heard that song in forever. Why do you do that? Travis said, barely taking his eyes off the road. Do what? Keep scrolling after you've seen something you like? She shrugged. I just want to make sure I've seen all my options before I decide. But you missed a perfectly good song because you're looking for something that might possibly be better. She stopped and looked up from the phone. What are you saying? I can't be satisfied with good enough. He shook his head. I just think you would be happy if you listened to the song you like, instead of looking for something else. You might be missing what's right in front of you. Julie didn't take her eyes off of him. She could hear another meaning behind his words and wondered if that's really what he meant. But more than that, she wondered if it was true. Can you close your eyes? Travis asked. Julie squirmed in her seat. Why? Because it's a surprise. Julie closed her eyes and sat up straight in her seat. With her eyes closed all she had were her thoughts. Talk to me. What do you want to talk about? Something to distract me from riding in a car with my eyes closed, and the fact that it's making me dizzy. I can do that. Do you have plans this weekend? 
nor are you still looking for a job somewhere besides Twin Creeks. Julie almost opened her eyes then. But she squeezed them closed and thought about the answer. She hadn't really decided before now, but in that moment she knew the answer. No that's good, Travis said. I'm glad to hear it. She felt the car shift into park and the engine turned off. Julie, you can open your eyes now. When she opened them, it took a minute for her eyes to adjust and to take in her surroundings. She looked out the window and saw the lake, and her heart leapt up to her throat. Oh wow. I haven't been here in years. I know, Travis said. He climbed out and came around to meet her. She had already opened her door but he stepped close as they began to walk. The gravel parking lot made her steps uneven. Travis reached out and caught her arm when she tripped. Phew, that could have been bad, Julie tried to laugh it off. I wouldn't want you to fall again. Let me help. He slid his hand from her arm down to her hand and took it in his. Julie quickly sucked in a breath. The feel of his hand against hers was new and exciting, but at the same time it felt familiar and comfortable. She let him lead her to the edge of the water, and they stood staring out over the lake. We came here all the time in high school, she recalled. Remember that time that Landon and Paul were showing off on the bridge, and they both fell in with their clothes on in February. Travis laughed. Yep. I'm surprised you weren't in there with them, she said. He shrugged. I dared them to do it. Julie gasped, you did not. I did too. I never knew that. But I've never forgotten the sight of both of them coming up out of the water, teeth chattering and soaking wet. Remember when we had the bonfires out here in the fall? Oh yes, those were the best. We would sit around and roast marshmallows and make esmores. Those were the days. Yep. He squeezed her hand. We had a lot of fun then. He turned to her, and it seemed like he wanted to say something, but he paused before asking, Are you hungry? Sure, she looked around. But we just got here. Do you want to leave already? Nope, he said. Stay here, I'll be right back. She watched him walk towards the car then she turned to face the water again. God, she whispered, I don't even know what's happening right now. She lifted her hand up and looked it over. Her fingers tingled from where Travis had touched them. She turned when she heard Travis returning, and he motioned for her to follow him. They walked further down by the water, and Julie saw a fire pit prepared with wood. Travis set up two camping chairs and put down a cooler. He pointed for Julie to sit in one of the chairs, then he began to build the fire. Julie sat and watched him without saying a word. When he got out hot dogs from the cooler, she laughed. As he started cooking them over the fire he looked at her and said, Save room for dessert, we're having esmores. A smile crept over her face and she didn't try to hide it. This is fun, she said as Travis handed her a hot dog dot. I thought you would enjoy it. What made you think of this? I wanted to do something that would remind us of the history we have. Julie could feel her emotions rising up, and she swallowed to push them down. Travis didn't say more while they ate in comfortable silence. The sky had grown dark and the sparks from the fire lit up the sky in tiny bursts. When Julie finished her hot dog she asked, Are you ready for esmores? Not yet. Travis slid his chair around to face her. I want to talk to you. Okay, Julie whispered. I've enjoyed having you back in town, and especially at work. Not only because you're a great employee, but because I was glad to have my best friend back. Me too, Julie smiled. But the more time we spend together, the more I'm reminded of how long we've known each other, and all the good times we've shared. He paused and Julie could tell that he was nervous. I wanted to come here to this spot that is filled with so many memories, because I want to remember what it was like then. But also because I want you to know something that I've never told you. All that time, the time we were here, the time we spent together in high school, the time we've been spending together now, I loved spending it with you, because you truly are my best friend. Travis, Julie tried to say, are you sure? But he held up a hand to stop her. 
I'm sure that I need to say this. Julie, I've always cared for you as more than a friend. I've never said anything because as much as I wanted to be with you, I was terrified to lose my friend. We grew apart over the last few years, but when I saw you that first day at the coffee shop, it all came right back to me. You easily came back into my life, as my best friend. But Julie, she waited, and she could feel her heart pounding. I want to be with you. I want to be more than friends. I have feelings for you, strong feelings, that I've always had, and it's time I finally tell you that. Julie sat in silence. She tried to process the words, but she was distracted by the nearness of him. He slowly reached out and took her hand in his and her senses came alive. She forced herself to breathe in and out. But all of the fear of losing her best friend washed over her at once. I'm scared, she whispered. Scared of what? Of what you said? Of losing you. You're right, we have so much history, and all the memories of our lives. But if we do this and it doesn't work out, then all of that will feel sad and painful. But why wouldn't it work out? he asked. I don't know, she sighed. But I'm just afraid to find out. He started to pull his hand back, but she clung to it, desperate to keep him close. Travis, you're my best friend. And you're mine, he said, inching closer to her. But what if your best friend turned out to be your soulmate? Her breath caught in her throat at his words. She felt as if all of time slowed down and nothing else existed, but the two of them in this moment. She kept her eyes locked on his and watched as he glanced down at her lips for the briefest moment. Their fingers intertwined together like a lifeline between them, and she never wanted to let go. When he closed the distance, she leaned in two and waited. She closed her eyes as he pressed his lips against hers. It only lasted for a second and when they pulled apart and looked at each other, Julie leaned in to kiss him again. He moved his hands to cup her face, and she reached out and grasped his shirt with two fists. When they looked at each other again, Julie started to laugh. Travis was quiet, but a satisfied smile hung on his face. Why didn't we do that a long time ago? Julie asked. I don't know, but I think we should do it again. Travis reached for her arms, pulled her over to his chair, and set her in his lap as he kissed her. Her fingers tangled into his hair, and he wrapped his arms around her waist, pulling her close as he kissed her again and again. He moved his hand and slid it past her ribs, and Julie let out a giggle dot. Don't tickle me, she said. Tickle you? He pretended not to know what she meant. Like this. He ran his fingers over her ribs again, on purpose this time and watched as she threw her hand back and laughed and screamed until he stopped. When she caught her breath, she put her arms around his neck and spoke. Travis, she said, this is serious. I know, he whispered dot. We can't just kiss and then go about our normal lives. This changes everything. But does it really, he asked. We see each other more than anybody else. There is no one else I would rather spend time with. So now I can tell you how I feel, but we still get to be who we are. Julie tilted her head and tapped her chin with her index finger. Maybe you're right. I've never thought about it that way. Travis grinned and raised his eyebrows at her. So you have thought about this before? She blushed. Well, you know, a few times. I knew it. I mean, all my friends in high school asked why we never went out. Even my sister said the other day that you've always liked me. Travis kissed the tip of her nose. She's right. So why now? Why did you never say anything before? I told you, I was afraid to lose you. But what makes you not afraid now? Travis sighed. It's not that I'm not afraid of losing you. It's that I'm more afraid of losing you forever if I didn't tell you how I felt. Hearing about you going on those dating app dates was pure torture. Julie rolled her eyes, oh, it was torture for you? I was the one sitting through all the horrific dates. Travis laughed. I hated that it was bad for you, but I was also relieved. It was torture seeing you put your profile up and look for other guys to go out with that, well, guys that weren't me. 
Julie furrowed her eyebrows. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to upset you. He shrugged. They may have gotten the disastrous dates, but I got to see you or talk to you after all of them. So I'm the real winner anyway. Julie laughed. Feeling a little competitive? If winning means I get to be with you, then yes. I'll fight anybody for that. He leaned in and kissed her. Julie knew the prize was all hers. Chapter 10 Thank you, and we'll have those parts in for you by the end of the week, Julie said before she hung up the phone. She could see Travis watching her from the back door. He looked around as if checking to make sure no one else was in the room before he approached her. He slipped his arms around her waist and propped his chin on her shoulder. Hi there, she said. How's it going? Travis asked Dot. Pretty good, she said. We've been busy. But Adam ran out to get lunch, so I'm holding down the fort. Looks like you're handling it pretty well. Yep. I sent both drivers out for deliveries, and we rented a skid steer and a telehandler this morning. Plus, we sold three chainsaws and a riding lawnmower. Sounds like you deserve a break. He straightened and spun her stool around so she faced him. He leaned down and put his hands on the counter behind her as he kissed her. MMM, that was a pretty good break. Want to go to lunch with me, he asked Dot. I wish I could, but I can't. We're too busy today, plus, I brought something. I'll just eat at the counter. How about dinner tonight? Sure, Julie said Dot. My place. Pizza and a movie. Julie smiled. Sounds perfect. Travis kissed her once more before walking out the front door. Julie let out a happy sigh as she watched him go. It was hard to turn her attention back to work, but the phone rang and she told herself to focus. When Adam returned from lunch and took over, she went to retrieve her lunch from the fridge in the break room. She was standing in front of the microwave waiting for her leftover chicken when her cell phone rang in her pocket. Hello, this is Julie. She didn't recognize the number dot. Hi, Julie, this is Sarah Collins with Amelia and Clothing Company in Atlanta. Julie almost dropped the phone, but she managed to grip it and say, Oh hi, with her eyes wide and her mouth gaping open. I have your resume and application on my desk and we are currently looking to fill a position. It's an entry-level position, but it's in our clothing department, and you would start out as an assistant to one of our buyers. We would like to interview you. Is that something you would be interested in? Oh, yes ma'am. Wonderful. I see that you're in Tennessee. Yes ma'am. I hate to ask you to travel all this way for a first interview. So why don't we set up a video interview? and we'll go from there. Sure, that sounds great. Does Thursday at 10 work for you? Yes, that's fine, her mind was racing, but she knew she would make it work somehow. Great, we'll look forward to talking with you then. I'll send the details to the email address on your resume. Julie said goodbye and hung up. She stared at the phone for several seconds before she let out a squeal, and raised her hand above her head with a celebratory fist. Yes, she shouted. This was exactly the kind of job she had hoped for. She did a few jumps up and down, glad there was no one in the break room to see her. When she stopped, she looked around at the place she had worked these past two months. What would she do if she got the job? Could she leave Twin Creeks now? The job here hadn't been what she'd expected, but it was going well. And of course, there was Travis. Travis. What would she tell him about the interview? He would be hurt if he knew she was even thinking about leaving. No, she wouldn't tell him yet. No use upsetting him when she didn't even know if she would get the job. It was probably a long shot, anyway. It's just an interview, she muttered. She made her way back to the front and ate her lunch at the counter. Just as she finished her meal, the bell over the door rang and she looked up to see Travis returning from lunch. He smiled his biggest smile when he saw her dot. How was your lunch? she asked dot. Not bad, he said. Would have been better if you were with me. But here, he placed a paper sack on the counter. I brought you something. 
What is it? See for yourself. She opened the bag and her eyes grew wide. Pie. Yep. From Bobby's barbecue. Chocolate meringue pie. Yep. She grabbed it out of the bag, you're the best. He kissed her on the cheek and turned towards his office. Can't wait to see you tonight. A guilty feeling washing over her as she watched him go. She had agreed to push their relationship to more than friends, and now she was hiding something from him. She wanted to hope she would get the job, but she hated to think how he would feel if she did. Asterisk 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 pizza's here, Travis said, standing up from the couch, where he had been perfectly happy to sit with his arm around Julie Dot. Great, I'm hungry. Why don't you get plates from the kitchen, and I'll bring it in here so we can watch a movie. He hurried to the door and thanked the delivery man as he took the two pizzas from him. He carried them to the coffee table and set them down, but Julie wasn't back yet, so he walked into the kitchen. He found her opening cabinets and searching for dishes. I don't know where anything is in here. Sorry. Plates are in the cabinet to the right of the microwave. She took two steps over and opened the cabinet he pointed to. Got it. He watched as she took two plates out and set them on the counter before closing the cabinet. He liked seeing her in his kitchen, in her oversized t-shirt and leggings. She fit here. Dot. This is a nice house, she said. Thanks. I really like the neighborhood, so when I was looking for a house, I knew I wanted something in here. I'm surprised, actually. I thought you would live in a small apartment or something. Not that you shouldn't have a house. Just seems like a lot for just you. He cleared his throat and wondered if he should say what he was thinking. He walked around the counter and stood close to her. When I bought it, I hoped I wouldn't live by myself forever. Oh. Julie only glanced up to meet his eyes before dropping her gaze to the counter. You know, when I first asked you what you expected when you graduated from college you wanted to know if you could be honest with me. Mum, I remember. You said you wanted to meet someone and get married and raise a family. He crooked his finger under her chin and tipped her head up to look at him. I've always wanted the same thing. Julie grinned. Really? Really? He kissed her then, slowly at first, until he stepped closer, and she bumped into the counter. He wrapped his arms around her and lifted her up to sit on the counter. She tilted her head down with one hand in his hair and the other on the back of his neck. He enveloped her in his arms and his lips made their way down her neck and then back up to her mouth. He couldn't get enough of her. When she put her hand on his chest, he felt like he could explode. He let out a sigh as he stopped and gently touched his nose to hers. He gripped the hand she placed on his chest and squeezed it. He placed one last quick kiss on her lips, then touched his forehead to hers. Julie seemed to understand and squeezed his hand back. Come on, she jumped down from the counter and winked at him. Let's go eat. He stayed there for a minute as she went to the living room to allow some distance between them. But as he watched her walk into the other room, he knew he wanted her here with him forever. Chapter 11 I have an appointment tomorrow morning. Can you cover it if I come in late? Julie asked Travis. She stood by her car in his driveway and leaned against the door. Sure. He gave her a strange look. Anything I should know about? No, she looked away, just something I need to do. All right, he said. No problem. See you when you get there. He kissed her and then waited for her to climb inside before he shut her car door. Julie waved as he watched her leave, then he turned away and she felt a terrible mixture of happiness and guilt. The night had been wonderful. Cuddling on the couch with him while the movie played on the TV and stealing kisses from time to time was all better than she could have imagined. But the next day she would be in an interview trying to convince someone to hire her and help her move away from here. When she thought about the moment in the kitchen and Travis saying that he wanted the same things as her, she could have melted into a puddle on the floor. But what if she was walking away from it? She rubbed her forehead and pushed the thoughts away. She cared about Travis, deeply. 
maybe even more than she had ever cared about anyone. But that didn't make it wrong to go to an interview, did it? She told herself she would just do her best and see what happens. There was no reason to worry Travis if it ended up being nothing. But this thing with Travis, it was most definitely already something. The next morning she was ready and waiting by her computer at 9.55. She had dressed in her favorite pink button-up and had fixed her hair and makeup to perfection. She fiddled with her silver hoop earrings as she waited for the video call to come through. Precisely at 10 o'clock, her computer beeped with the incoming call. Okay, Lord, help me. And let this be whatever you want it to be. She clicked the button and smiled. When the woman appeared on the screen, she greeted her. Hi, Julie. Hi, she said cheerily. Thanks so much for meeting with me today. Can you hear me and see me okay? Yes, perfectly fine. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. I can see and hear you too, so we'll just jump right in, if that's fine with you. Sounds good. So tell me about yourself. Sure. I graduated in May with my degree in retail merchandising. I've always enjoyed clothes and fashion, she chuckled, I guess a lot of girls do. But I was always interested in why people pick and wear the things they do and choosing quality fabrics that are functional and fashionable. I chose retail merchandising so I could learn more and always hope to work in retail clothing one day. Have you worked in retail with customers or ordering? Yes, as a matter of fact, I'm currently working in a retail store working with customers and fulfilling orders. She bit her lip, but hoped this would look good. It's actually not in clothing though, it's for a construction equipment company. Oh wow, that is different from clothing for sure, the woman gave a small laugh. Yes, it is. But I think it's been a great learning experience for me because, for one thing, I had to learn about every piece of equipment we carry and how they are used. But that taught me that it's very important to listen to the customer and find out what they're looking for and what their needs are, then helping them find exactly the right product. I think that's the same whether we're talking about a dress for an event or a backhoe for a building project. The woman nodded. That's true and a good thing to understand. Julie smiled, knowing she had given the right answer. I'm going to be upfront with you about this, Julie. This is an entry level position, and the pay isn't great. But we're looking for someone who really wants to learn and be trained. We like things done a certain way around here, so I need someone who is willing to start at the beginning and learn and make their way up. I'm very willing to learn, and I would love the opportunity to get started and grow with a company in the industry I want to work in. The woman asked her a few more personal questions, and Julie told her about her family and growing up in the small town of Twin Creeks. Let me ask you this, she said. We're hoping to find someone who will be part of our company culture for the long haul. We like to train our employees, keep them happy, and help them grow in their profession, so we like to keep them around. Where do you see yourself in five years? Julie felt her heart pound at a double time as she thought about her answer. Only one word came to mind. Travis. But she smiled and launched into what she had been planning for her life just a few short months ago. In five years, I see myself working as a buyer and really cultivating my favorite lines for customers. Of course, I would like to be married and have a family too, but I can see myself living in a big city and working in fashion merchandising for a long time. The woman nodded and made some notes on her pad. You sound a lot like me when I first started out. I knew I wanted to work in the industry from a very early age, so this was always my dream. I have found success here, and I've been able to balance my home life with my work life too. I think you could be a great fit here. Thank you, I would really love the opportunity to work with you. Julie, I know we're supposed to be a little more distant in the first interview and not get your hopes up, but I'll let you in on this. We've interviewed a number of people this week and none of them have had a clue what they want to do, and they're just tossing out applications wherever they can. You're the first candidate that has shown an actual interest in what we do here, and you sound very open to being taught. I do have to talk it over with my team, and I'll pass along what you've said here today. 
I feel really good about saying you're our strongest candidate, and I would enjoy working with you as well. Julie could hardly believe it. Thank you so much, I appreciate you taking the time to meet with me today. We'll be making our final decision tomorrow. So you can expect to hear something from me by then. Great, I'll look forward to hearing from you. Thanks, Julie. Have a great day. You too, Julie waved and then the call was disconnected. Ah. She screamed and jumped up from her desk chair. She jumped up and down as she danced around the room. Oh my goodness. I can't believe this might actually happen. She thought of all the applications she had put in months ago, and how she wished so badly that an opportunity like this would present itself. She fell onto the bed and stared up at the ceiling. But now what? What would she tell Travis? Could she really move to Atlanta and leave him here? She glanced at her watch, remembering that she didn't have time to lie here and think. She still had a job to get to. One with the man whose heart she might be about to break. Chapter 12 Julie had been quiet all afternoon. Travis had asked her how she was when she got to the store just before lunch, and she said she was fine. But he could sense that something was wrong. He wanted to ask her about it, but he knew that this wasn't the place. Even though he enjoyed having her at work, it made it hard to separate business from their personal lives. At the end of the day, they closed everything and shut down the computers. Adam said goodbye and walked out, leaving Travis and Julie alone. Want to get a bite to eat, he asked, sliding his hand into hers. She held onto his hand, but still seemed distant. Sure, but I need to get home after that. I've got some things to take care of tonight. He nodded, but she wasn't looking at him. He let go of her hand and waited for her to get her purse. He walked out with her behind him, but she seemed to be moving at a snail's pace. He stopped at his car and turned to face her. We don't have to go eat if you don't want to. No, it's fine. What's wrong, he asked. Nothing, she said, not meeting his gaze. Come here, he leaned back against his car and held his arms out to her. She stepped close and tucked her arms around his waist and laid her head on his shoulder. He kissed the top of her head and let her breathe for a long minute. Hey, he finally said and waited for her to lift her head to look at him. He laced his fingers together behind her back. What's wrong? Whatever it is you can tell me. She looked him in the eye for a moment, but then laid her head back down on his shoulder. There's nothing to tell. I don't believe that, he said, causing her to look at him again. Julie, you tell me everything. We've been friends for a long time, so I think I know when something is bothering you. You tell me when you don't like a color or when you don't feel well. So what are you not telling me now? And why? She let out a sigh and looked away. When she looked back, there were tears in her eyes. I didn't want to say anything until I knew for sure. And I didn't want to upset you. Fear struck inside him and he had to know right away. Are you sick? She turned to him, no, no, nothing like that. I'm fine. Well anything else I'm sure we can work it out. Just tell me what it is. She took a deep breath and let it out slowly. I had a job interview today. Oh is that all? Where? What kind of job? It's an entry-level position, but I would be trained to be a buyer for a clothing company. Wow, that sounds perfect for you. I know. I've always wanted to work in fashion. So this would be like a dream job to get started with a company. And they would want to train me and help me move up in the company. That's great. I'm so proud of you. So what's the problem? I mean, I really like having you here, and I would hate to see you go. But don't feel guilty about that. We'll work something out. I wouldn't want to keep you from a job like that. That's not the problem. Then what is it? It's in Atlanta. Travis felt his world tip on its axle. Atlanta, he muttered, feeling sick. Atlanta, he repeated. I wasn't expecting that. I know, she said quietly. I sent in my resume the day I was sitting in the coffee shop, and you came in. 
Travis wanted to kick himself. If only he hadn't waited so long to ask her out. She never would have applied for a job far away if they had been together. But then again, did he want to keep her from doing what she wanted? He swallowed hard and tried to put on a brave face. Did they offer you the job? Not officially. But she said I was the strongest candidate so far, and she would let me know by tomorrow. So it could all be for nothing. I might not even get it. It pained him, but he gave her a smile. I don't believe that. If they interviewed you, then they already know how great you are. I'm sure they'll offer it to you. She dropped her gaze. Thanks. But I don't know what to do. I want to be here with you. We'll figure it out. Somehow. He wanted to believe the words coming out of his mouth. But it was hard to do. When the call came in the next day, Travis was right beside her. And when she heard the words, we would like to offer you the job, she smiled and nodded at him. She had to watch his face as he realized she could be going away, and it broke her heart. He smiled, but she could see that it hurt him. Thank you, ma'am. I'll look over the email contract, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. She said goodbye and hung up. Travis hugged her, but it felt awkward. Two weeks ago, she would have turned to her best friend and been congratulated, maybe even picked up and twirled around the room in his boisterous manner. But today, things were different, and it was a solemn hug. He whispered, congratulations, in her ear. But then he turned and walked out the door towards his office without another word dot. Julie managed to make it through the last few hours at work. Travis stayed in his office and didn't even come down at closing time. She wanted to go up and talk to him, but she didn't know what she would say. The drive home seemed longer than normal. Her feet felt like they were covered in cement as she lifted them one after the other up the stairs. She shut the door to her room and fell face first onto her bed. The tears rolling down her cheeks felt like a relief after holding them in all afternoon. What in the world was she going to do? I've ruined everything, she cried into her pillow. All I wanted was to be happy, and things were going great with my best friend, and now I get this dream job offer, and I can't even be happy about it. Why did I give in and agree to be more than friends? All these years I've wondered what it would be like, but I always kept that guard up. If I didn't fall for him, I couldn't lose him. But now I let myself fall for him, and as soon as I do I get this job offer. She rolled over on her back and stared at the ceiling the same way she had after the interview the day before. How could something be so exciting and so full of dread at the same time? If only this were an easy decision. She closed her eyes and did the only thing she knew to do. God, she said. I'm lost and confused. I've always wanted a job like this. I came home from college upset that I was moving back to this town, single, with no job. Now I've got a great job offer, and a wonderful guy who cares about me, and I don't want to leave. How do I choose? She heard no answer, and she turned back over to cry again. Dot. Asterisk 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 Travis wanted to punch a hole in the wall of the warehouse. Everyone else was gone for the day, but he didn't want to go home and sit in his big empty house alone. For the first time, he really thought he might be headed towards having someone to share it with. And not just someone, but the one girl he had wanted to share his life with since they were kids. He walked in his office and slammed the door shut. He jabbed his hand through his hair as he fell into his desk chair. What was I thinking? All those years of seeing her every day, and I never told her how I felt. And now I tell her my feelings just in time to see her move away to find a different dream. He spun around and told himself to stop talking to himself. Maybe he should talk to God instead. God, he spoke with a lowered voice. What do I do now? He waited for an answer that didn't come. Did I hear you wrong when I decided to open up to her? Did I get ahead of myself and do something that wasn't part of your plan? He couldn't believe that was true. He also couldn't believe Julie would turn her back on what they had. It was the most important thing to him. She was the most important thing to him. But if she was ready to pick a job and a new city over him, 
then maybe she wasn't the girl he thought she was. Travis leaned his head back on the chair and let out a long sigh. Maybe it was time to let her go. He stood and walked out of his office and out the door of the building he had known since he was a kid. Working here every day was something he loved along with this town and the people in it. He pulled the door closed and locked it with his key. He walked slowly to his car, as he did every day after work. But the pit in his stomach and the emptiness in his heart was new. But he had to be honest with himself that maybe it was time to start thinking about the rest of his life without Julie. Chapter 13 Is Travis Coming for Dinner? Julie's mother asked, as she pulled plates from the cabinet. Julie cleared her throat. No, not this time. Why not? Did he have plans? Julie shrugged, not wanting to reveal the truth. She took the plates from her mother and moved to the dining room to set the table. Her mom followed her. Is everything all right with you too? Julie took a deep breath. I'm not sure yet. Why not? Elise raised her voice. I thought things were going pretty well. They were, Julie said. She stared at the tablecloth, reminding herself what was wrong. She still hadn't made a decision, but she hadn't been ready to talk to Travis about it. And he hadn't talked to her outside of work. Are we ready to eat? Let's just get to the table. Elise gave her a look that said this conversation wasn't over, but she nodded and moved to the kitchen to bring in the food. Once everything had been laid out, and her parents had taken their seats at the table, Julie sat down and closed her eyes as her dad bowed his head to pray. She whispered her own prayer for her nerves. Why was she so nervous, anyway? This was good news, wasn't it? Elise began passing a dish around the table, and Julie didn't wait any longer. Mom, Dad, I have some news. Oh! Her dad raised his eyebrows as he spooned a helping of creamed potatoes onto his plate. Julie cleared her throat. I got a job offer. What? Really? Her mom's eyes and mouth fell open, and she nearly jumped out of her chair in excitement. Yes. It's an entry-level job, but they want to hire someone that can learn and grow with the company. I would be working as an assistant buyer for a clothing store. Honey, that's wonderful. Thanks, mom. Where is the job? Her mom asked. Julie swallowed hard. Atlanta. Elise almost dropped the plate of green beans. I know. It's a little far. But you know I've always wanted to live in a big city. Elise nodded slowly as she placed the vegetables safely on the table. Yes. I guess I still hoped you would stay close. Especially since, she didn't finish, but Julie knew what she was thinking. I haven't accepted it yet. She wasn't sure why she said that. But it's a great opportunity. It's not likely I'll get another one like it. A long quiet fell over the table. Julie squeezed her palm open and closed dot. Congratulations, sweetheart, her dad broke the silence. We're proud of you, and we know you're going to do great. Julie pressed her lips together as the emotions caught in her throat. Thanks, dad, she managed. With that her mom changed the subject, Julie assumed to avoid her own emotions, and they made it through the dinner without any more near spills. Later that evening, Julie stood in her closet staring at the clothes hanging on the rack. She had always laid out her clothes at night for the next morning. It gave her time to think and plan an outfit that she loved and that she would feel great in. Since she started working at the rental store, she hadn't laid out her clothes once. What was the point when she wore jeans and the same work shirt every day? Well, not the same one, but one that looked the same as her other five work shirts. She sighed as she fingered a floral silk shirt. Did she really want to spend her life wearing the same work shirt and being around construction equipment every day? If she was honest, she knew she would say no. Her teenage self would be practically screaming at her to pack her bags and run to Atlanta before she could even think about staying here. But Travis Dot. He had always been there always her friend, always available and always in this little town. The town where Julie had no plans to stay forever. Sure, her family was here, 
and it would always be special to her, but she had bigger plans than this. Wasn't that why she had never planned to fall for Travis in the first place? Julie didn't want to admit it, but she had always known that if she fell for him, she would be stuck here in Twin Creeks forever. And that wasn't what she wanted. Was it? A knock at her door pulled her from her thoughts. Come in, she called out Dot. Hey, honey, her mom said, walking in the door. Hey, mom. Julie moved from the closet to the bed and took a seat. How are you doing? Julie shrugged. I'm fine. Her mom gave her a look. I don't know. I guess it's just a big decision. Elise nodded. Yes, it is. And by the look on your face, I think it has a lot to do with a certain someone. Julie looked up and met her mom's eyes. Of course she knew. She always did. Julie fell back on the bed and put her hands over her face. I don't know what to do, mom. I mean, it's Travis. I know, Elise said, taking a seat beside her on the bed. Julie couldn't see her, but she could hear the smile in her voice. He's always been my best friend. I was afraid to let him be more. And this is exactly why. Why, her mom questioned, and her tone made Julie sit up and throw her arms in the air. Because of this. I didn't want to stay in Twin Creeks. I wanted to move away and start something new. But Travis has never wanted that. I've always known he would be perfectly happy living in this town forever. And what's wrong with that? Julie opened her mouth to speak, but nothing came out. She let out a huff and tried again. Well, because, it's, she dropped her gaze to the bed. It's just not what I imagined for my life. Elise folded her hands and leaned on the headboard. She seemed calm and collected. What did you imagine for your life? Julie conjured up the image she always had in her mind. I imagined working in clothing, maybe something in retail, getting married to a man with a good job, and raising a family. Mum, her mom nodded. What else? Julie shrugged. That's all, I guess. Mum, her mom said then fell quiet again. Julie let the silence hang for a moment before she blurted out, What? I just have one question. What's that? Why can't you do all of that here in Twin Creeks? Julie's breath caught in her throat. She wanted to argue, but she didn't really have an answer. Her mom stood and patted Julie on the shoulder. I think that's definitely something to think about. And if you don't immediately have a good answer for that question, she paused and leaned down to meet Julie's gaze, then maybe there isn't one. Julie watched as she left the room. Could her mom be right? What if she could be happy here? What if she could be happy with Travis? Chapter 14 Travis and Julie sent a few text messages back and forth over the weekend, but Julie had said she needed time to think about her decision. Travis had spent two days thinking that Julie was walking out of his life. But on the third day he decided he wasn't going to let that happen. He hadn't finally told her how he felt just to have her leave. At least not without putting up a fight. If she chose to move after he pulled out all the stops, there was nothing he could do about that. But he had spent too long not saying what he wanted. That part of his life was over. Now he was going to be honest and put all his cards on the table, and take a chance to see what happened next. Luckily he'd had the weekend to think it over, and now on Monday morning, he headed to work with a plan. When he pulled into the parking lot, later than normal, he had already run errands around town and stopped to pick up coffee for his employees. He knew they appreciated it. He just didn't tell them that he also noticed they were more productive when he brought them caffeine. He carried the handles of two drink carriers as he pushed the door open with his back. When he turned around to face the counter, he smiled wide for the most beautiful face he had ever seen. Good morning, he said. Good morning, Julie replied, her voice quiet. Happy Monday. He lifted the drinks into the air. Looks good, Adam said from his spot on the other side of the counter. He nodded to Travis to confirm what they had already discussed. Travis set the drinks on the counter. Adam. Can you let the guys know these are here? 
he lifted one coffee cup out of the carrier and walked around the counter behind Julie. This one's for you, he stepped close and wrapped his arm around her with the beverage. Thanks, Julie whispered. I'll let everyone know. Adam stood and walked through the door to the warehouse. Travis stepped to the side and leaned his back against the counter. Hi, he said, waiting for Julie to look him in the eyes. Hey, she rewarded him with the look he wanted. He didn't waste any time as he leaned in and pressed a kiss to her lips. Julie didn't move, but she did kiss him back. When they parted she said, Travis, but he stopped her with his fingertips over her lips. Don't say anything yet. He reached for her hand. Grab your purse and bring your coffee. I have a special job for you today. But Julie looked over her shoulder in the direction Adam had gone. Don't worry about it. Adam will handle things. Julie let out a quiet sigh, but Travis caught the small smile as she pressed her lips together. Outside, he led her to his car and opened the door for her. Where are we going? Julie asked. You'll see. He went to his side and climbed in, but he didn't start the car. He turned to face her, his voice filled with emotion as he spoke. Julie, I've known you my whole life. And I've waited a long time too long to tell you how I really feel about you. I know that you've been presented with a great opportunity, and I wouldn't want to pull you away from something that would make you happy. But, I truly believe you would be happy here with me. And today I want to show you just how much I want you to be happy. He cranked the engine and pulled out of the parking lot before Julie responded. She seemed to want to say something, but she bit her lip and looked out the window as she sipped her coffee. Travis turned his attention to the road as he navigated to the main part of town. Main Street held a number of shops and businesses, most of which had been there for as long as he could remember. He continued to the end of the row and pulled into a parking lot. If you could call three spaces a parking lot. He turned and watched Julie's face. She scrunched her eyebrows in confusion. What's this? Travis pointed at the building in front of them. Come with me and I'll show you. He climbed out and waited for her to join him. He took her hand and led her to the front door when he reached into his pocket and pulled out a key. Julie's eyes grew wide when he slid it in the door and unlocked it. Who owns this building? I do. Or I will soon anyway. What? Julie's voice echoed against the empty walls as they stepped inside. Travis dropped her hand as he stepped to the middle of the room and held his arms out to his sides. What do you think? Julie looked from one blank wall to the other. I don't know what to think. What do you want with this building? There's no way you can have an equipment store here. No he went to her and took both of her hands in his. I was thinking of a different kind of store. What? A clothing boutique. Julie gasped and put her hand to her mouth. She looked again from one blank wall to the other, but now Travis could see understanding dawning on her face. She pulled her hand from his and walked to the front door where she ran her hand over the antique doorknob. Then she turned and moved to the back of the building. Travis waited, he knew she was seeing the back closet with tall shelves and another small room. Julie walked back to him with tears in her eyes. I guess I'll ask again. What do you think? It's perfect for a boutique. The room in the back would be great for a fitting room, and there's space for inventory. It would be perfect, she said. I thought so. But, I can't open a boutique. I don't know how to start a business, and I don't have any money to invest in something like that. See, I think you're wrong. You can do this. You've been working towards this your whole life. You know what people like, you know clothes, and I think you've learned a lot about helping customers at the rental store. Travis paused and cleared his throat. And I want to help. I can help you with the business part. I have some money set aside, and I've been looking for an investment opportunity. I think this is the perfect one. Asterisk 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 Julie stared at the man in front of her. Her mouth fell slightly open as he said he wanted to invest in a business for her. Really? He nodded as he took her hands in his again. Really? But what if it doesn't work? 
what if the business flops? It could you know. She tilted her head and bit her lip. Travis nodded again. It could I don't think it will but I've already considered that possibility. The truth is, I spent a lot of my life not starting something that I wanted to because of the possibility that it would fail. He squeezed her hand. I'm not making that mistake again. Julie, I love you. I've always loved you. The thought of you walking out of my life makes me miserable. But the thought of beginning a life with you gives me the hope to start anything. And I also know that if I'm going to invest in something, I want it to be something I believe in. And I believe in you, Julie. I believe you can do this, and not only do I think you won't fail, I think you'll thrive. Julie felt like sparklers were lighting up her insides. Could she do this? Could she really? She couldn't be sure about that, but she was sure of one thing. Travis, I love you too. She had more to say, but he interrupted her with a kiss. He wrapped his arms around her and held her tight. He tipped his head back to say, that's all I needed to hear, then kissed her again. This time he deepened the kiss until they were both breathless. Julie steadied herself with her hands on his arms. The thought of leaving you again made me miserable too. I'll be honest, the thought of starting my own store scares me. I don't know if I'm ready, but if we can take our time and plan it well, maybe I can be. Thank you for believing in me. If you'll help me, and we do it together, I think it just might succeed. Is that a yes? Does that mean you'll stay? Julie grinned and heat filled her cheeks. Yes, there's nowhere else I want to be. Travis wrapped his arms around her, lifted her in the air, and spun her around. He didn't let her feet touch the floor when he kissed her this time. Julie giggled with his lips against hers. She knew this was exactly where she needed to be. Here in this town, with the man of her dreams. And her best friend. Epilogue Julie straightened one last item on the shelf before stepping back to see how it looked. She tilted her head and bit her lip as her gaze roamed from top to bottom. The collection of hand soaps and lotions were a perfect fit for the store. The bright pinks and greens were just right for springtime. She smiled at the work she had done and spun around to look over the rest of the store. The front held racks of women's clothing, from tops and dresses to jeans. The middle section held tables with displays of jewelry, and the entire back wall was rows and rows of shoes. A bell rang over the front door, and she turned to see who was coming in. Hey, she said. It's not time yet. Travis grinned spread wide across his face. I know. But I think a co-owner is allowed in the building before business hours. Julie smiled as he came to her, and placed a quick kiss on her cheek. I guess it's allowed. She sighed. I just wanted one last look before anyone comes in. This is a big day. Yes, it is. I'm so proud of you. You've worked hard making sure every detail is perfect. I couldn't have done it without you. All those budget sheets and projections gave me anxiety. He took her hand in his and squeezed it. That's why we work together. We're a good team. I agree. Travis wrapped his arms around her, and his look turned serious as their eyes met. Julie, I was going to wait until tonight. But I don't think I can. Julie lowered her eyebrows in concern. What is it? Working together to get the store running, and working in my store before that. It's been wonderful. I couldn't ask for more in an employee or in a business partner. But I think you and I both know that we should be more. Julie's heart pounded as she understood his meaning. She told herself to say something, but no words would come. I want us to be partners in everything. In business, in life, and in love. Julie, I love you more than anything. I've said it before, but I'll keep saying it. I've loved you my whole life, and there has never been anyone for me but you. I want to keep loving you always. He paused only to reach into his pocket and pull out a small black box. He opened it to reveal a diamond ring. Julie, will you be my wife? A giggle bubbled up and burst out of her mouth. She wiped at the tears filling her eyes. Yes, of course I will. 
I love you, Travis. His lips met hers in passion, and a promise. Julie playfully swatted his arm. You're making me ruin my makeup right before my grand opening. She laughed. I'm sorry, I've waited my whole life for this, and I couldn't wait another moment. He took the ring and slipped it on her finger, then he kissed her again. Now we have two things to celebrate today. I'll celebrate every day with you for the rest of my life, Julie said. Dot. Me too, Travis said. Every day for forever. This has been Her Best Friend, written by Hannah Jo Abbott. For more books visit www.hannahjoabbott.com. Be sure to check out the next book in the Love Off Limits series, Her Roommate's Brother available on YouTube, and as an ebook on Amazon.